finding your peace of mind. It's a phrase thrown around so often that the meaning can get lost because finding is a process that requires work. Unfortunately, many just don't know where to begin. It's why I'm thankful for people like Lorenzo Lewis and his Confess Project, as it provides avenues for others to achieve mental health. I looked forward to learning more about his work and his life's journey in our conversation. So, so tell me why you started the Confess Project. Yeah. What, what you saw as, as the issue you were trying to address and how your, your never give up spirit really pushed you to actually start it. At the time I was working in the behavioral health system here in Arkansas, yeah. I saw that there was a huge gap in, you know, cultural competency in the behavioral health system. You know, we recognize- And when you say gap, a gap between what and what? Yeah, so, you know, 2% of psychiatrists identify as African-American men in the United States. Um, you, know, um, you know, suicide is the third leading cause of death for mm. young black men between the ages of 18 and 40. Uh, you know, suicide has skyrocketed now during COVID-19 right. and the pandemic. <clears throat> and so even in that moment, I recognized that there was a gap in providing culturally responsive services to African-Americans. Um, tell me, tell me, talk to me about what you do with the Confess Project yeah. and how you grew. So what, what you do and how you started from the idea and went to, you know, one barber, multiple barbers. Now you're literally all over the country, yeah. literally <laughs> all over the country. Yeah. Um, what well, a Confess Project is, it's pretty simple, you know, is, you know, we're providing barbers with a peer to peer support model that allows them to become mental health advocates. So like, one barber can be matched up with or, or is have in conversation and growth with another barber and they're on this journey to be able to be advocates for mental health. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And wow. also within the coalition of other barbers that we bring in, to, taking them through the same process. Yeah. But ultimately, they're there to support their community members that come mm. in and out of their shops. Yeah. These barbers are now gatekeepers, and Harvard University recognized them as um, gatekeepers in, in urban communities now mm -hmm. that can really stop, you know, um, stop a lot of the destruction that our communities could face. Yeah, I man, that's that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, and, and you say the barber shop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember getting up early Saturday morning and going with my dad to the oh, barbershop. Yeah, yeah. uh, it's, it's funny, we would get there 30, 45 minutes before the barber yeah, would get there. Yeah, Mr. Hayes, that was Mr. Yeah, Mr. Leroy Hayes was the barber. And, and it would still take us five, six hours to get a haircut. Mm. Uh, it was more than just a haircut. Mm -hmm. It was an experience, it was a community, it was a conversation. Absolutely. It was learning as a kid, it was sharing as older men. Uh, that that was my experience with with barbershops. Is is that why you chose barbershops as your sort of place of grounding for the Confess Project, or or is there some other reason? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of it is um, you know really seeing how they took care of the community, right? Took care of the folks that came in there that was homeless, fed mm. people, did for the community, and then also did people's hair, cut folks' hair. Hmm. This was really where the heart of the village was, and village care. What I heart call of the it. village. I like so, that. So you know, the village care they provided there is really what allowed me to connect how we can do the same for our brothers and sisters that are going through shops now. You know, let, 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 me, let me take it back. Um, you have had a lot of rich experiences in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's one experience that you had that really informs where you are as a man and as a person today? One that I commonly is very more present right now is my experience when I was incarcerated mm. at the age of 17 yeah. um, for a firearm. And I, I think about that because I was right there on that turning point where, you know, I had a chance to get it together. Mm -hmm. I could have went backwards. Yeah. And I say that because we recognize recidivism is a real thing. That's right. That's right. Um, and so going inside the system, I was given an opportunity by, you know, a, a judge at Arkansas to, to, to get it together. Mm. And so I was able to take that opportunity. So the judge made a choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was like, hey. And that was in your benefit that time. It was. That's it what's was. up. And so, you know, went to college, UAPB, right here in the state. Yeah, Golden Lions. Yeah, yeah. And um, best thing ever happened to me, man, because it really allowed me to grow socially. Yeah. And just really let me evolve. When you think about the future for Confess, the Confess Project, and for Arkansas, what do you see? What what 
What does it look like? What if you could realize the dream of the Confess Project, which you're already doing? What does Arkansas now look like, and what what does the country now look like? You know, I think what it looks like is that we have built community in a way that I think has become contagious mm. to our counterparts and everybody around us. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that we notice when we go inside a barbershop that's missing is that people hadn't felt seen, heard, and celebrated. Mm. And that's, seen, heard, and celebrated. That's what we feel like has now started to ripple and that will ripple over time. Mm -hmm. But I do think vastly uh, leaders really can look at connecting folks in their districts and people in their ecosystems because there are a lot of interested people that want to yeah. see this change yeah i love it man i love it man i'm so proud of yeah, you bro thank you, thank you. yeah i want you to keep pressing Absolutely. Um, i'm honored to be a part of the journey and I'm looking forward to some phenomenal things from you and the Confess Project, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Good stuff. <laughs> One's story can't be easily understood by just knowing a single chapter. Rather, it's how those chapters build upon each other, forming a narrative far greater than any single page. A man on a mission with a team, a vision, and the grit to bring it into existence. Lorenzo and the Confess Project are helping to bring about mental health and community wellness two needed aspects in this great state of ours. What a rich conversation we had with mental health advocate Lorenzo Lewis. He's focused on the issues that people often forget, and he's going into communities that people often leave behind. Lorenzo's not the only one across the state who's doing that, but we're excited about his work. Find out how we're going to address those issues by going to ChristopherGovernor.com.